one of the things I absolutely love about these big expanses of water is you just never know what's going to happen. One minute you can be sitting in your t-shirt, the next minute you've got your full waterproofs on and you just don't know when it's going to happen. You could sit there for, for two hours and not get a bite, you keep plugging away then all of a sudden it happens. Big fish start moving in, you catch big roach, big skimmers and big bream, even the odd big hybrid. So it just, it just really gets my juices flowing because you just don't know what's going to happen. Venues like this are sometimes forgotten. They just remind me of well, when I used to go to Ireland with my dad when I was younger. A massive expanse of water. You never know what's going to happen. But there is pitfalls. A lot of them you'll find there's a, a shallow ledge and then it goes into the deep water, which is where braid really comes into itself because it's rugged fishing. You've got things like rocks and boulders, and a lot of the venues like this one here and in Ireland, there's a lot of zebra mussels which can cause you all sorts of problems. Many, many years ago we used to come to these venues when I was a little boy and now you're getting matchmen and pleasure anglers lining them all the time. And one particular method that is, is works on these venues is feeder fishing. I was very, very lucky to be one of the first international feeder anglers when I got picked to represent my country in 2011. Uh, I did actually see the first feeder revolution in the 70s on the River Trent as well. So I love this kind of fishing. And since 2011, the more people go in feeder fishing and the more we're getting to use these massive expanse of water again. They are just, they're so, some of them are uncharted territory and that's what makes it so exciting. Hell of a cast that, mate. How far was that? 74 metres that, Steve. That landed perfectly. If that's not a fish, then I, I'm going to get surprised. No, there's, there's, there's some fish out there now, mate, to be fair. There's some fish out there now. I can see that braid cutting through the water nicely. What braid's that? That's the, the new Acolyte uh, braid in a 012 size. It's just cutting through the water a tree. It's nearly, nearly sunk now. As soon as the feeder hits the water, rod tip, under, and you can see the braid will just disappear. See, that's sunk now, and then just draw it straight back onto the rest, and you're fishing. One of the most important things when braid fishing is, is before you start using it, you must wet it, either with an atomizer or just a tub of water. It's so important, if you forget to do this, the braid can just jump off the reel when it's dry, and you can get in all sorts of trouble. That is 74 metres. Of, I sticked it up earlier after, after plumbing up, and just looking for something uh, where I think these, these bigger fish might hold up. These big reservoirs like this, they, they always seem to have a, a flat spot then a ledge uh, and you, nine times out of ten you, you definitely need to be in the ledge. It's a natural holding area for, for these big bream where the, all the tow brings all different kinds of food in there so you need to be like down the ledge sort of thing. So I have a good plumb around and I've, I've just gone five or six metres into the deep water uh, which is at 74 metres, which has been sticked up. Here we go, that's a bite. Oh, that was a nice bite then. Oh, missed that one. Too busy talking. Too busy talking. <laughs> we'll, we'll blame that on a liner. We'll call that one a liner. <laughs> yeah, so no, it, the, the sport's been pretty good, to be fair. Uh, kicked the session off uh, with a few feeder falls and then waited probably 20 minutes for a bite, which I caught a nice roach for a start, which is... It's nice on a fishing point of view, but when you're after these big bream, you, sometimes you think uh, that, uh, there you go. Just what I was on, just about to say, is I've got to come back with some uh, zebra mussels zebra, on the hook. Ah, zebra mussels, right. Yeah, so zebra mussels, you find them in these big lakes now, especially uh, in these big wild uh, reservoirs. And to be fair, they can be a bit of a pain, but there's always fish where these zebra mussels are. And that's another reason why uh, I've gone for the 012 diameter braid. Uh, because of the rough ground you're fishing on, it's just a bit more abrasive resistant. So you want to be, it's all belt and braces because it is extreme fishing. We're fishing at distance, we're fishing over uh, rough ground. So you want, you want the gear on that can, that's not going to let you down sort of thing. So you're matching that with the hook length? What hook length is that? Uh, hook length is 022. Oh, as strong as that? Yeah, 022 tough, yeah, and a size 10 hook. The, the fish are big, the five and six pound fish. Mm -hmm. You're fishing at a distance, you're fishing over rough ground, and when, you, when you're casting that far, 
you need to make sure that you're going to get everything back do you know what i mean Makes and sense. we're fishing with big baits well i've got five maggots on there mm -hmm. uh, which is a perfect bait for a big bream or a big skimmer uh, so the, the fish are the fish are going to be confident uh, in that deep water so that's why everything has to be a little bit bigger as such you're fishing a big water mm -hmm. so you need big rod 13 foot distance rod 5,000 size rail. we're not messing around all this is just to make it easier to get to where we need to be where the fish are oh you've done that before <laughs> only a couple of times so one of the key things is is when you're casting this far if you notice there when my feeder landed i'm still pointing it at the feeder because it's got to go down to the bottom and there will be a bit of slack line if I did, like on a commercial, you would hit your, your clip back here. Yep. You'd have to wind all the slack line in. You've got the toe of the reservoir. Uh, you've got the wind. You'd be, you'd be forever trying to tighten up to your, to your feeder. But with that, all I need to do is just pull the slack onto the rod rest. And as you can see, we're more or less fishing straight away. Makes sense. I see you had a window feeder on. Yeah, we have all different kinds of feeders. Uh, cage feeders, like that. There you see the nice and slim, uh, which are brilliant for distance, obviously. Yep. And then a window feeder, which is which has all come from the Irish scene, really. They're obviously very, very popular in Ireland, but today window feeder has been definitely a lot better. And I think it's because there's a bit of toe. Uh, I want to get all the bait right down to the bottom, which a window feeder does. It protects your bait, and it generally comes out when your feeder gets to the bottom. But obviously with a cage. They do let a few little bits and bobs off, do you know what I mean? A bit of bait will come out, a uh, bit of ground bait, a bit of worm, a bit of caster. And sometimes the fish will stay up and try and eat the fish up, uh, eat the bait up in the water. Yep. When obviously fishing the feeder, the only one place you can fish is on the bottom. So it's like every day is different. Makes perfect sense. Every day is different. To be fair, this does remind me very much of Ireland. Yeah, so. yeah, it's 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 perfect. It's and these kind of venues are are becoming so popular now. Uh, I mean, obviously here at Staunton Harold, it's with there's matches here now. Uh, it, it's it's been left untouched for quite a while, uh, but obviously now with feeder fishing becoming so so much popular, venues like this, Bow Beach Reservoir, Ferry Meadows, uh, they're getting really good attendances. Not just for matches, pleasure angle as well. They're just want to come and fish these big wild waters. So what terminal wise are we fishing on the end of the rod then? Uh, oh, look at that. Tackle wise, I've got a shock leader uh, on this long rod. Because we're whacking uh, quite big feeders, 50, 60, 70 gram feeders a long way, I do like to have a shock leader, which is twice the length of the rod and two turns onto the reel when I'm holding the feeder in my hand. It comes in, in important in two ways. One, as I say, when you're casting out, it is the shock. But also, when you're catching these big bream, when they're five and six pound, when you get them under the rod end, I do like to play them on monofilament rather than the braid. Because obviously braid has zero stretch and you don't want any up pulls. You don't want to be winding back 70, 80 metres and uh, with no stretch, you get the bream under your rod end and the up pulls out. So the shock leader works in, in two ways. That's a nice, nice silver bream, that I think. So, so the mono's just giving you that little bit of extra stretch, bit yeah, of an insurance policy. A bit of an insurance policy again. That is, that's the silver bream, that is. Absolute beauty, that is. Or Augusta in certain places. Augusta, yeah. That is an absolute beauty. Got a tummy on it as well. Yeah, looks like it's captor. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's here, I just pulled in, as you can see. We've got a window feeder, a large window feeder. These, uh, these, these bream and these uh, silverfish, these skimmers, they do like a lot of bait. When, when they're on it, you, you can't feed them enough. Do you know what I mean? So I can get a lot of particles in there. And like I say, the window feeder, it gets everything down to the bottom. Right, with the cage, it, any, any bits can come out Breaks on the, way, on the down. way down. Yeah. I get it. So, so the window feeder. Helicopter rig? That's a helicopter rig, yeah. Basic helicopter rig. So I've got three inches of twizzled line with an American snap swivel, two stops and a quick change bead. Very, very so simple. So you notice there as well, the most important thing about this is I've got that little tiny bit of play there. Because it is a bolt rig, 
that gives the fish a little bit of time to mouth the bait before it bolts and pulls off. If you have those two stops together, it'll be a complete bolt rig. And sometimes the fish can feel it and you don't want to be uh, winding in every five seconds, striking at a false bite. You want, when you get a bite, you want it to be a good bite and connect with the fish. I would imagine that doesn't tangle as well on the cast or? That's one of the key features of that rig. The helicopter rig is, is so durable. Uh, it's like I say, like in Ireland, these massive reservoirs and locks, the weather could change at any second. Of course. I mean, we're sitting here now in our, in our hoodies. Half an hour ago, I had my coat on, it was raining. You just don't know the wind could change around. So you, you've got to have a rig that, uh, that helps you present the bait. The last thing you need is to be chucking that far and you're sitting there, you're not sure whether your rig is performing because if it doesn't perform, it's not going to catch you a fish, is it? Perfect. Well, if, I'll let you chuck that out because I've had a little notice that the short rig, totally different rig. Tangle yeah. Tackle wise. Yeah. Well, let me just cast this out. Obviously, want to want to try and catch one of these big bream. And obviously, with braid, with there being no stretch at all, you get the distance a lot easier. If you're fishing mono out there, you you, you probably wouldn't even see the bite, Steve, because of the stretch of mono. So that's why braid is so important on these, on these big expanse of water and uh, for fishing at distance. You can, you can get the distance with, uh, with monofilament, but you just don't get the bite detection. Well, that was 70 metres and that was effortless. Yeah, 74. 70, sorry, <laughs> sorry, those four metres. Four no? metres make all the difference. <laughs> Makes a lot of, lot of difference. So, so talk me through this short one. I'm looking at this short one. I'm saying this is braid again? Yeah, this is braid. Uh, it's a thinner braid because because I'm going to be fishing at a shorter distance, uh, I'm not going to be fishing over rough ground, so that's 08 braid. That means that when I cast in, I can uh, tighten right up to it, it's going to cut straight through the water, and I'm going to be fishing within seconds. Fishing for different fish. On these uh, big reservoirs, on top of the ledges, you'll find you catch a lot of roach. Roach, little skimmers, hybrids, and they're a bit busier fish than, than the bream we're fishing for out there. They're like a grazing fish, do you know what I mean? Makes sense. And these now, and I think that's one of the grazers. But with that rig there, that's what I call braid straight through. It's got about 50 centimetres of mono for the rig to actually run on because it does run better on mono, but 99% of it is braid. And I will see when that feeder hits the bottom, I can see everything that's happening. It's so tight and so sensitive and with roach the, the bites are different like that bite there was a nice traditional bream bite it was mm. just going to keep going when you're fishing for roach they're like i say they're a bit more scatty and you want to see everything uh, that's happening under the water i must just say you're reeling in it's very quiet i normally relate brain braid to uh, quite a noise when it's reeling in that's that's almost silent yeah it's nice it's very it's quite uh, it's quite smooth and no you, 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 you you, you don't want your braid making too too much noise as such uh, but this is an eight carrier braid so it's very 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 durable like i say in these conditions it's a nice skimmer and that's another there. nice fish yeah i call that a little bream but some people call that a skimmer there's a big debate. What is a skimmer and what is a bream? I always led to believe a skimmer is silver and a bream is bronze. Well, that's, oh, that's... We'll, call, we'll call that a small bream there. <laughs> well, well, I see you're putting a white net together here, Dean, so I'm going to shoot off. In fact, I think I'll go home and I'll respool some uh, braid on my reels. All right, well done, buddy. Cheers, pal. See you, see you later. Bye-bye, mate. Bye-bye.